Hey there, DIYers! Today we're getting our hands dirty with solenoids. Think of a solenoid as a little electrical muscle. It's a simple coil of wire that, when juiced up with electricity, creates a magnetic field. This field can push or pull a metal plunger, making things move. Solenoids are everywhere. They're in your car, starting the engine and popping the trunk. You'll find them in doorbells, washing machines, even pinball machines. But like any hard worker, solenoids can wear out. That's where your trusty multimeter comes in handy. We're going to learn how to use this tool to check if a solenoid is working properly. A multimeter is a must-have tool for any DIYer. It's like a Swiss army knife for electricity. It measures voltage, which is electrical pressure, current, which is electrical flow, and resistance, which is the opposition to electrical flow. We'll be using the resistance setting on our multimeter today. Don't worry, it's not complicated. We're basically going to see how easily electricity flows through the solenoid coil. There are two main types of multimeters, analog and digital. Analog multimeters have a needle that moves across a scale. Digital multimeters have a digital display which is easier to read. Either one will work for this job. Before you start poking around with your multimeter, make sure the solenoid is disconnected from any power source. Safety first. Now let's set up our multimeter. First, turn the dial to the resistance setting. This is usually marked by the Greek letter omega, or omega. Next, plug the black probe into the COM port. Then plug the red probe into the port labeled for resistance, usually also marked with omega. Touch the probes together. The meter should read zero or close to it. This tells you the probes and meter are working correctly. Now we're ready to test our solenoid. Section 4. Taking the coil's pulse, the resistance test. With the solenoid still disconnected from power, it's time to take its pulse, the electrical kind. First, locate the two terminals on your solenoid. These are the metal points where the wires connect. Next, touch one probe to each terminal. It doesn't matter which probe goes on which terminal. Now read the display on your multimeter. This number is the solenoid's resistance, measured in ohms. Write down this reading. It's important for figuring out if your solenoid is healthy. Section 5. Good vibrations, bad vibrations, reading the results. Here's the moment of truth. Is your solenoid working or not? If the resistance is very low, almost zero, your solenoid coil is likely shorted. This means the electricity is taking a shortcut and not flowing through the entire coil. A shorted solenoid won't work properly. Each solenoid has a specific resistance range it should fall within. You can usually find this information in the manufacturer's specs or online. If your reading falls within this range, your solenoid is likely in good shape. If the multimeter reads infinity or OL, open loop, it means there's no electrical continuity through the coil. This indicates a break in the wire somewhere. A solenoid with a broken coil is as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Section 6. Troubleshooting, when things get sticky. So your solenoid's resistance is out of whack? Don't panic just yet. Here are a few things you can check. Make sure the wires are securely connected to the solenoid terminals. A loose connection can cause a high resistance reading. Over time, corrosion can build up on the solenoid terminals, preventing good electrical contact. Try cleaning the terminals with some sandpaper or electrical contact cleaner. Sometimes the problem isn't the coil itself but the plunger sticking. Try gently tapping the solenoid while testing the resistance. If you see the reading change, the plunger might be the culprit. If none of these troubleshooting tips do the trick, it might be time to replace the solenoid. Section 7. You got this. See, checking a solenoid coil with a multimeter isn't rocket science. With a little practice, you'll be a pro at diagnosing solenoid problems in no time. Just remember to stay safe, double-check your connections, and don't be afraid to get your hands a little dirty. Happy fixing!